Hey, gang, this is Carl White broadcasting from, well, actually, I'm broadcasting in my kitchen today. I'm sitting here in the kitchen, those of you watching this on on, uh, uh, YouTube, but you're listening to Loan Officer Freedom, number one podcast in the world today for loan officers. Uh, Thanks to you guys for getting the word out, and thanks for having just amazing uh, guests uh, that we interview, which is the case today. So I'm your co-pilot today, called a pilot in command, Mr. Uh, Adam Hawkins, coming out of Scottsdale, Arizona. My man, how you doing, Adam? Uh, Carl, true pleasure. Thank you very much for having me on. So we're going to talk about how you went from two loans to nine loans. Before we do that, give us a little bit of background just real quick, Adam, that uh, where, where, are you, where are you coming out of? Uh, banker, broker, loan officer, branch manager, just kind of give us a, a little bit of a, uh, of a background. You bet, Carl. And if we're going to label it, it's actually two to eleven. If we want to get right down. Oh, well, to it. wait. Well, yeah. So <laughs> two to eleven. Yeah. Every every two loan. Every two hey, loans. Help, you you know. bet. Absolutely yeah. on this side. So um, I am in the broker world. Uh, on this side, came from the banker world. Made that transition now into the broker world for me. Um, I, I run a little branch here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, and is it your branch, or do you work in yeah. somebody else's? Yeah, I mean, it's not my company, but it's my branch on the branch. Yeah, nice, nice. Good for you, yeah. buddy. Yeah, you. absolutely. Have, have hey, well, what, what's the name of them? Let's give them a plug. What the hell? Yeah, you bet. Lender Express Mortgage. Nice. And are they only in Scotts? Is that an Arizona-based thing? Yeah, so the headquarters in Arizona, but we're also in Texas as well. Nice. Another great yeah. state. Another awesome. region. Yeah, you bet. All right, perfect. Uh, so, yeah. you're, uh, so you're branch manager for yep. a broker shop. Yep, correct. Okay. So, yep. And I, I got to that role too, Carl, by exploring all different types of being just a loan officer, a team lead, um, running something bigger. And I found kind of the sweet spot for me is that branch manager affecting a few of the people that I, you know, having a select group with uh, and the broker world gives me great autonomy, flexibility in, in my style and way in which I uh, operate. But the one thing I was always missing, Carl, was a tried and true system because on the broker side of things, you have the freedom, but a lot of it is, okay, now what are you going to do with it? Where I feel like the bank mm-hmm. where we came from, I had a little more support, you know, in the way that there was more people helping you. But here I can make more, but at the same time at, it's kind of like, go get them, you know, here's your laptop, right? Here's, yeah. your, go do your thing. and A little uh, less structure perhaps. Yes. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. 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 Yep. 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 So, so for me, it was a it was a good transition because I had learned the system. I knew what I needed to do in the way of doing a great loan, making sure that you have customer service on that. So I spent the first you know five to six years that aspect of it. Now it was time for me to transition over, but I was missing greatly, Carl, the the system that you have put in place, which we can talk to in detail. Later on. All right, so so let's talk a little bit about the history then. So now, so wait and, and wait just for one clarification. So, um, and and correct me on my timeline if I've got this off, if I've got the story off. But like you, uh, branch manager, yep. and uh, doing well, yeah. And then you and and then you decided that you wanted to focus on your own production. Right. And, and do you have loan officers in your branch now or are yes. you the guy? Yep. Yep. I've got three. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. So, uh, so while you have those, you just, you wanted to focus a little bit more on your own production. Correct. All right. And, um, and, and I'll say to that Carl too. So I came from a non-producing aspect of it. And for me, I, I missed it. I, I like that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I wanted to get back into an environment that allowed me to still pr- produce and then kind of lead by ex- example uh, and, and and be able to, you know, instead of theoretically saying, well, if I was out there doing that, that's what I would do. I, I feel like it almost gives you a little more street cred in my instance, um, mm-hmm. leading the way with, with the volumes and then also being able to teach it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, and you know, the, another thing about, a good thing about doing the, doing the volume yourself is anytime somebody says insert in thing doesn't work, so you go, well, Dude, I don't know. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. The uh, I'm 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 at the bank de- making my next bank deposit from the loans that I closed this month. I I couldn't hear you. It's a little noisy here in the bank so as they're true. counting out my money from doing that very so thing true. that you say doesn't work. You know. So anyway, Absolutely. so um, so cool. So let's do a um, let's do a little year to uh, year over year comparison, and then let's talk about like, dude, how'd you do this? So, um, so in. So as we're recording this, 
we're in March of 2024. So January of 2023, in other words, a year ago in January, what did you close in January of 2023? And a little backstory on this too, Carl, before the January 2023, I was coming off doing 26 million a year, 24 million a year, COVID started oh, to rates, everything was great on that. And then um, as those rates started to rise, as they did in 2022, 2022 I didn't make any adjustments. I thought my old way of do doing things, which quite mm. frankly was my phone just ringing. I wasn't making it ring. Uh, and that started to go less and less and less. Um, and then when 2023 hit, I did zero loans in January. I did zero loans in February. And I did one loan um, it was a home equity line of credit for 75,000. That was my first quarter of 2023. Uh, and at that, that point, that had was, been scary. Oh, Carl, scary. I've got four kids and, and, and a wife I've been married to for uh, like 20 plus years. So it was one of those ones where I was like, oh gosh, something has to change. So if anyone is out there listening, was searching for this Carl, like I was searching for something. It just there was just a lot of gimmicks and people out there that would promise the world, but couldn't deliver on that aspect of it. So um, was doing that. And, and then that's when, if you compare that now to now with you, basically fast forward a year, I start in middle of December to late de de December, literally right in between Christmas and New Year's, right? So when everyone else was taking it off, I'm like, nope, this is my time. I'm doing it right from the um, from day one. I'm doing it. Even so, I believe Christmas, the next day after Christmas was a Monday, the same after New Year's. I made my calls, even though, you know, then everyone else was taking it off. So January of, of this year, two loans, okay? Infinitely better already. Doubled my production for me. <laughs> Which is not saying no, it's more than double calls, double zero. Oh, yeah, you I mean, got you. Yes. No, yes. you had a, it's it's an infinite, it's infinite yes. increase. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Goodness. good for you, man. So yes. January was two this yep. year. Yep. February. February two. But what's but what was really neat about that, Carl, is I saw it starting to build. So while it hadn't closed yet, you can see that's what's beautiful about our industry, Carl, and what Steve Kyle's talks about, the predictable income. You can start to build that pipeline and start to see it. It was starting to snowball. And I remember back on my first day was talking with Krista. A shout out yeah. to her. What an amazing Love woman Krista. she is, part of your team. And so she was telling me like, hey, this is not a quick remedy. Hey, great. You make calls. You're going to get some in. You might. And actually one of my two in January was because of it, which is great. Right. But um, it's like, it's a 90 day thing. If you stick to this and you do this every day, you show up on call stars, which we can talk about at any length that you want to on that. You show up every single day and 90 days, your business will look completely different. And so I started listening to your podcast, Carl, and you said your 90 day self will kiss you. Right. You know, like if you're looking at that moment, it's so true. Like I look at myself now where it's at and, and uh, if I could talk to that person there that started 90 days ago saying, just do it, that's it. And, and I did. And so February two, and then of course, March, I saw an explosion. And so March, you're looking at, what'd you say? 11, 11, 11 for 4.2 million. Oh man. Good for you, buddy. Yeah. So going, so doing one last year for the quarter and this year, 11, 30, 15 for yes. the quarter. Dude, that's that's amazing growth. And and Carl, here's one thing I want to tell you on this too. I wanted to come onto this podcast, not to, I'm even just a little sheepish, even sharing my numbers because I'm not like that. But if if this can inspire one person, mm -hmm. one person to be like, hey, I was in that set. It wasn't like I was closing seven, eight, nine, and then I jumped up to 11. I was literally closing zero, uh, two goose eggs of zero. And if it inspires one person of seeing like, oh man, I'm in that same boat. And if I follow what the mortgage marketing animals has laid out, I can have that type of growth because I'm not, I'm not special in any way. I'm just one that is consistent. If I believe in what you have mm -hmm. built and you have, and I, and, and you're, and I'm consistent with it. Like there was no, like my wife, Carl has to call in three times in, in a row you know, ring, ring after ring after ring to know that I have to get off my two two, two hour uh, outbound calls. No one comes into my office. Nobody, I, I don't take any inbound calls. I am doing those two hours, which I believe is the fundamental to having that freedom that we talk about. So let me say, so do, do you work with your wife, by the, by the way? I don't. Nope. She's a nurse. So she- Okay. Okay. Oh, awesome. All yeah. right. Very cool, man. So uh, 
my wife, she, she uh, ended up working with me full time, the lovely Mrs. White. Oh. But uh, she she was a nurse, and oh, so there we go. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll have yeah. to we'll have to share stories about that uh, once once we, once we finish this. So, all right, so let me let me ask something, man. The first thing I start to hear your story, it's it's, it's a remarkable story, brother. My hats off to you, because I can tell you a lot of people, and and maybe even myself, you know, uh, where I've had great results, and then here I'm I'm into a, a new year, and you know, of 2023, and. Uh, and I goose egg January, goose egg February. A lot of people would have cashed in at that point or tapped out and said, you know what? I, I just got to go get a job somewhere. Not that this isn't a job, but you know, I, I need to go get a, like a W2, you know, hourly salary, you know, job. Uh, did, did that enter your mind? Like, Hey, maybe, maybe I need to do something else or like, how'd you handle that? Daily. Uh, and, and, and I'd be lying to say that I didn't explore that, um, reaching out to other friends, seeing what was available. But bottom line, Carl, is there in this business, you can you can earn what a doctor does. You can I mean, it is it is phenomenal. And I get to help people in one of their biggest transactions, their most exciting moments. I loved the industry. I just didn't have a path. It just was, you know, like especially COVID actually made it worse for me. Even though I made my most money, what what I was living in and the steps I was doing was not building a business. I was just part of a wave. If, mm -hmm. if that's right, mm -hmm. everybody, everybody was doing well during mm -hmm. that, which actually gave me a false sense of security in, in the belief that one, I got this figured out. And number two, it was always going to be this way. So mm. I love it, Carl. If your system can work in this market of what we're doing on this, where I think in Arizona, Carl, I think 60% of the loan originators didn't renew their license. It's, it's not fact-based. I'm just from what my boss was telling me, I, uh, saying about how they didn't renew their license on that side of things. Which yeah, for me is, because if you think about this too, there's so many people out there that are thirsting for the system that you have in place. And what I was so impressed with, Carl, the moment I saw it, I wasn't overwhelmed of like, I'm like, I can do, do that. I can make the dedication to do that. I mean, you you simplify a plan so much so that you're like, if you're willing to be, to put in the work, you will have the results. And that's why I wanted to come on here. I'm like, yeah, yeah, look, I'm telling you right now, I am that person that's listening right now that's struggling doing one to two to one or zero, that if you have a system and, and you follow it, you can you can read the rewards. And now you're on the very podcast you were listening to. Oh, How isn't cool that, is that, man? That amazing. I, lo Absolutely. I love, I love, Absolutely. I love a good success story, man. Oh, it's, it's, but all right, and so not, and not in three years, in 90 days, right? So th th think, think about that too. I think that's important too, mm -hmm. where well, while it's not overnight, it's not a year or two down the road e either. We're, we're talking about 90 days of being dedicated to everything you do Monday through Friday. What else is absolute bananas, Carl's, is that I work less, meaning that I have more time for my kids on the weekend. I was always working on the weekend. So I was working more and still getting those frustrated numbers. Now I'm so much more efficient. I'm not busy. I'm productive. And mm. you made the delineation, the distinction for me. I think that's anytime you ever talk to somebody and say, oh, I'm I'm busy. Well, it kind of it, it, now that, that I had the education that you have to taught me, I'm like, oh, that's great. But what do your numbers look like? How productive are, are you? Because mm. you told me this in the very beginning on one of your podcasts, it was like, look, you can work 32 to 40 hours and still have make a tremendous in income because I thought it was always trading hours. Well, I got to work more than if that's going to be. Mm -hmm. the case, right? And I've got three girls in high school and a little seven year old boy. Like I've got a window. Right. And I think that's important to understand. And you, that really hit home for me emotionally. Yeah. I don't know. Man, I, you, a lot of good stuff you had there. And I, I tell you that, that one thing you said, boy, there's a lot of people sh nodding their head uh, in agreement with you right now where, you know, when you said, Hey, I was having my best year ever. And I thought it was always going to be this way. Yep. I think a lot of us, I, and, I, and I'd be lying if I, if I didn't say I didn't fall in that boat at some level too, where I think a lot of us, myself included, were so busy patting ourselves on the back uh, in 2002 because of 2001 yep. that uh, we kind of took, uh, or I kind of took my eye off the ball. I know I did. Uh, and, and I saw a decrease also during that time. And not everybody did, right? Not everybody Carl, did. Carl, how about this too? So not only the decrease, but then not, not for me, it's so, okay. So you see not kind of a decrease. I went 26 million, 
24 million and then 20 to 23, 12, right? And then not, but not making the adjustment. You know what I mean? Like you obviously see not kind of a drop off of 10 to 15% of 50 plus percent change, <laughs> but yet I was doing nothing about it. And it wasn't like I didn't have the desire to it. I just, there was nothing for me that, that was tried and true or that had come across that actually gave me hope to change those numbers. All right. So let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, so how'd you do it, man? Like what, what for you, what moved the needle the most? Like what, what is different about your daily activity this week than what it was a year ago this week? Love it. I love it. So I'm very, I'm, I was very structured before, but structured busy wise, not structured productivity wise. The two biggest things for sure is I got over call reluctance. And you helped me with that. So, and I'm sure a lot of people face this. It, there is not a lot of um, excitement on a Monday morning to start cold calling realtors, right? That you've never talked with before and have it be like, yeah, I can do this for two straight hours. But what you taught me and what Steve Kyles has done the same is like, look, the cold calls are going to be a small portion of it. There's actually warm realtors out there that you've worked with in the past. What you have to make sure, delineation between busy and productive, are they eight plus buyer sides or not? So in the beginning, I was looking like, oh my gosh, the majority of the people that I was talking with wanted to, but just didn't have the business to send me. That mm -hmm. is considered busy. So, so I'm having the conversation with them. If I look in two areas, Carl, and, and I'm looking on my um, 11 that I have in this week, six of them, so over half are from my past database. So I never called my past database, Carl. I, I don't know why it never dawned on me. I send them the, um, you, you know, the emails and they get the text message on the anniversaries or the things of that nature. But I cannot tell you since on Wednesday is our um, past database day. We spent, I spent two hours, I shut my door and I call. From that, you will not believe it of just the people that are like, oh, Adam, I'm so glad you called this, 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 right? And my purpose of my call, Carl, was nothing more than to give gratitude and thanks for trusting mm -hmm. me with your past experience. Number two, to let them know that I'm always here for their buy, sell, or refinance needs, which I thought was assumptive. It's not. You've got to be in contact with them. And then even then, I'm like, okay, where before I was like, if I'm going to call them, how often? What does it mean? You guys broke it down for us. It's the first two letters every single week. And you'll do that and you'll go through, you'll you go through your database once a quarter, four times a year. Like that's just an example of many that what mortgage marketing animals does, Carl. It just simplifies things for so, you. So so uh so of the eleven, you yep. got six of them from your past database. Correct. Uh, just just as a our our are most of them refis or most of them purchases? Is it 50, 50? Like where's yeah. that on, on, on the, on just the past database ones off the top of your head. Yeah. I got um, three or cash outs. Okay. So yep. three, so half are, half are cash out and yep. half are purchase. I take it. Exactly right. And, yep. and are they, are, are, are all six of these, the actual people in the past database or is it their aunt and uncle or their brother-in-law or Good is question. it their actual loans? Good question. I, um, on the purchase side, I have, I have two of the five from people that purchased a home, but on the database side is from my direct database, my past cook clients. So on the purchase side, it's more of, it's not your past database, but your past database referral of somebody, a friend, yep. family, or coworker. Yep. Exactly. Right. And so, yep. all right. All right. So past database moved the needle uh, to the tune of uh, six loans for the month. So, uh, which is remarkable, by the way. I mean, that's that's it's going from zero to to six doing that is remarkable. So past database, uh, anything else? So past database was responsible. Where where where'd the rest of them come from? What what activity is working yeah. for you? Another big thing was I read your book about call reluctance, which really mm -hmm. hit me. On that, and I and, and you know what I want. I want to give. Uh, I, I, I always I always feel the need to do this. So a very 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 fine gentleman, uh, Kevin Gillespie, uh, wrote that book with me, and, and it's probably it not probably it's way more accurate to said he that that he wrote the book with some input from me. <laughs> I, I just want to be clear that he go, uh, go, go. he's uh, that we did it together, but uh, but but Kevin deserves. Uh, the largest amount of the credit of it. So uh, I think I think I uh, uh, certainly added something to it, but but I, I just want to make sure to be to give 
you know, I w- always feel uh, the need to, to, to share that, that he, uh, he's just an awesome guy and uh, he has a great, so he's a, uh, he's the, uh, the leader of our, uh, we call it the, uh, uh, we used to call it the branch manager Academy, but it was just a branch manager. So anyway, I didn't mean okay. to get off on a tangent. Oh, there, it's wonderful. Always, it's great. Uh, and it's other, otherwise, otherwise uh, uh, Kevin will call me up and say, Hey man, <laughs> what, what was that crap? That, no, he he would never do that. I'm just kidding. He would never ever. He's he's way too kind of a man. But uh, but he should. But he should. Yes. So, oh. Yes. And then, so Carl, one of the things was in your book that really hit home for me is that I used to take it personal when they would say no. Hmm. And in there, either either in your podcast or your book, you give example of let's say that you had a wonderful meal, and your waiter com- comes up to you, waiter waitress says, "Would you like to d- dessert?" And you say no. Are you saying no to the waitress or just the fact you didn't need the dessert at that time? It's like, oh my gosh, wow, how huge. So now when I talk with realtors, one, I never forced the conversation. Number two, I know exactly what I'm going to say because you have a partner in Steve Kyles that is a wizard at be- being able to make you feel yeah. confident you know, with, with, with your script. So, um, and if they say no, or I'm working with somebody, one, you have rebuttals. And then number two, I'm only looking for the 16%. You know, like you guys make everything statistics, what I love too. So 16% of those people that you meet with will actually refer you business. So I'm only looking for the people that want to work with me. And how do you get that? Offers minus no's equals dollars, right? So you just simplify things for me. So now my calls, whether they tell me yes, no, maybe, or they push me off, it did, I'm going to make a call for 12 weeks. If they don't give me anything, then then somebody co- comes off. Again, simplicity. But you'll be surprised when you go through that and you have that mentality instead of like a gut punch every time somebody says, who are you? Why are you calling me so much? Because you're going to get that, but it's just part of the offers that you make right? To find the nose to get to the money aspect of it. Dude, it's, you know, it's, I always think of it and, and, and I'm just going to use some very general numbers because we, we don't talk about basis points and, yeah. you know, actual checks uh, amounts uh, so much because it's, it's so individualized depending upon what somebody's situation is. But let's just say, um, let's just say if, if, if somebody was to average out, say $3,000 per closing yeah. and at 11, at 11 closings, that's 33 grand. Hey, there, there's a little bit of work involved with earning 33 grand for the month, right? I mean, it's not all peaches yeah. and cream, right? There's, there's a little bit of work to do it. So, all right. So, so uh, past database. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what I heard you say is uh, the realtor referrals was yes. number one and number two. Yep. And, yep. and uh, uh, overcoming the call reluctance or still having the call reluctance, just doing it anyway, yeah. right? Feel the, fear, feel the fear and do it anyway. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Hey, Carl, and at one point, I really want to let people know on this is I'm 90 days in at this point and that reluctance ebbs and flows. So there are days where I have none. There are days I'm like, hey, this is great. There's some days I'm like, especially on a Monday, right, when you're just getting your your week started again. But there's just something about being committed to something that it doesn't matter how you feel you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I will tell you this. When you go through it and you talk with the realtors and they give you the rebuttal and you can talk about back and forth, you get in a flow like those those conversations become much easier, and much more natural. In the beginning, Carl, like this, I would have my hi, this is that, you know, it would just be reading right off of there because anything worth doing is worth doing badly. I just got started with it. But now it's so much of a flow, Carl, now. And I'm talking 90 days in, not again, six months, a year down the road. You you understand kind of the, you've gone through so many calls that you just understand. But I never would have done those calls if I didn't have what you guys have laid in place for me and overcame the reluctance to get to where I am now. You know what, you know what, I, th- I, I, I I'll tell you how I overcame the car reluctance and it, and, and I bet it's going to. It, your your story sounds very similar to mine that I came to realize my broke reluctance hmm. out trumped my call reluctance, so you know, true. where like you, man, I remember, God, I remember when I first got started in the mortgage industry, I had just left a pretty well-paying job. And again, wife, three kids. I think you said you have four, right? Four. Yeah. So you even have one more reason, right? <laughs> So wife and three kids, brother, they count on us. And, and and for our ladies in the office, you know, your husband, your kids, or, or I don't care if it's your pet parakeet, right? People count on you. And uh, yeah, my broke reluctance 
uh, the, the fear of being broke out Trump the uh, the fear of somebody telling me no for something. So, hey, oh, so Carl, well, one thing, too, this is so important. Tell people that are listening right now, you had you had me on one of your, your videos, make a list of all the things that you want. Right. Mm -hmm. for, for doing it. And then if you weren't going to make your calls, great. What are you willing to mark off that list? So my mm -hmm. oldest daughter is a senior in high school and she's going to college. Good for you, man. You want to talk about like, there is no chance in God's green earth that I would ever be, well, sorry, you you now can't go to college because dad wouldn't make his phone calls. You mm. just, you're the, the paradigm shift in which you gave me on that, mm. of making that list saying, great, you don't have to make your calls, but it's not like you're forcing, but what are you willing to X off that list was very powerful for, for me. As yeah. Well. Good for you, man. What, what What's your oldest daughter's first name? If you don't mind me asking. Allie. Allie? Allie. Yep. Hallie. Hallie. Well, yep. Hallie has an awesome dad and I'm, I haven't met the Mrs., but I'm sure, uh, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So I'm sure. Uh, so good, good for you, man. You. Hey, so let me, so let me ask you. So you get mapped out a plan, but then it comes time to actually do it and do it again. It's not like you had to do it for the last three years or something like it's yeah. kind of a recent thing, but you had the discipline to do it. Yeah. How do you keep that discipline of doing it? So in your case, you're calling for your, your prospecting two hours a day, Monday through Thursday, Thursday. So Monday through Thursday from nine to 11, you're doing prospecting. Nothing else gets in the way. I love the, I love the fact that you're, if you don't mind me asking, what's your wife's first name? Bargy. Bargy? Bargy. Yep. Bargy. Yep. Oh, Margie. Okay. So, uh, Margie calls you, calls you like twice and hangs up twice and hangs up twice and hangs up as your code for your two hours is up. So I, I love that, man. I do. I love that. So how do you have the discipline to do it, man? Like where, where, do, where does the discipline come in from? How does uh look, everybody knows if I prospected for two hours, I'm going to get results, right? As long as you're prospecting to the right people, of course. Right. But what sets you apart, my friend, is you had the discipline to do it. How, how do you, how do you get that? How'd you get that discipline? Like, how does what? Great question. I think one is my uh, upbringing, but number two is I honestly believe that momentum or discipline is a muscle. See, you're not just born with it. You know, it's not just like oh, it's it's something that you honestly have to develop. So if I know that, then I've got to develop that discipline muscle like anything else. And, and what's the greatest deterrent that most people, they don't feel like it, or, you know, they'll find an excuse. As my dad has always say, excuses sound best to the ones that are making them. That, that's all it is. So, so as soon as, <laughs> as soon as I realized my friend that I was going to do this, and I think this too, I think this is very important for people to hear. Don't even start this if you're not committed to this, right? Because it will work. Like put that aside. I am living testament of this but if you are committed and say and look i'm not saying be committed for a year just give it 90 days so i made that commitment and i'm so glad that i did because emotionally you are going to find multiple reasons not to do it there's going to be um daily you you can easily find reasons for it so i took the emotions out of it so discipline i believe is a a muscle. And then number two, one of the greatest things I did was I took my emotions completely out of it. I don't care. There is no other reason in the world of why. And look, Carl, we're talking two hours. We're talking to two hours, right? I know you make mention of some of the other people that are out there that are doing manual labor and construction and all that stuff with it. What we get to do. Okay, great. So I get a no. So someone tells me not to call back again. My life is not in danger. I'm not in 110 degree heat, right? I mean, like we have it so good. There is, there is no reason why I can't make those calls for two hours. And then look, once you have that foundation of two hours, go about your business, right? Learn, do some of the other stuff. I take from my from my 11 to two is my, my, my time for lunch to catch up on things. From two to four is my appointments that you'll naturally create by your calls. So you, it's not like you're so many people say to me, well, you're so structured. Well, no, I discipline equals freedom. So I know for me to have the freedom that I want to, my discipline is those two hours. There is nothing more important to that, but I'm not regimented. I'm not slammed all the way up through, you know, from 9 a.m. To, to 4. I have my flexibility time. And then from my 2 to 4 is my uh, appointments. I like that. So 9 to 11, 
is your prospecting. Yeah. 11 to two is your stuff. Exactly. Like just whatever, reacting yep. to things like whatever, yep. emails, whatever, social media. And then two to four is your, uh, is your, is your meetings, either, Correct. either your meetings with referral partners and or clients. Is that right? Correct. Is yeah. exactly right. Which makes but it not- great too, well, right? I know when to make those appointments. If someone says, Hey, Adam, can you meet me at nine o'clock? Oh, sorry. I'm scheduled then. I don't even have to, that, that is my, my, my time. Another thing I would do, Carl, is I used to, before you guys is I'd be bouncing all over. I would run over meet a realtor at 9 AM across the Valley, come back, jump in on a file from here to here. I mean, there was no continuity in anything that I was doing. So sometimes saying no is the best thing that you possibly can. Not a hard no, but like, Hey, I've got this time available from two to two to four and they'll, they'll find time in there. They really will. But I'm so productive, so productive that, that I didn't have before. So let me ask you this. I mean, uh, like, gosh, I mean, it's, it's just been such a short time. This may not even apply. What, one of my favorite questions is to, so if you could go back and do something differently what would you do differently? But dude, you've gone from two to 11 in a 90 day period. I mean, that's just, I, well, anything you do different or is like, no man, that was, that's well, pretty one, impressive. Uh, I'll tell you one thing I did, Carl, is, and I realized this was I got support right away. So I, I got an assistant. I have a pre-approval specialist and she's okay. amazing. She's well, both of them are incredible. So what I did was I built that team well before I had the volume. Did you, you know what I mean? Like, so if, if I had the option of doing it, which I did, I built it before, which means, yes, I'm going to make less per loan, but I'm building it to get up to here because 11 on your own would be, Oh man, I, I, I really think it would be. Yeah. It'd be very tough to ma- maintain. You, you might be, be to, well, well, the, the following month. You'd close zero because exactly. you'd be spending all your exactly. time trying to close the eleven, right? Thousand yeah. percent. So I, I'm a big believer and a proponent of people if they're dedicated to MMA on this is to get a support staff in place for you to be able to handle the future volume. I know you guys say once you get past five, you know that's kind of the magic number, and that's mm-hmm. and look, not everyone's in my environment or my opportunity. I totally understand that, but I would. Uh, I, one thing that my one first day self did very well was understanding that I want a team around me as soon as I possibly can get it. Not mm-hmm. so I have more time to go golf or do, do something else. No. So I can stay on the highest and best use of my time, which is sales, which is yeah. making the phone ring. Once it rang that, that is somebody else's responsibility. Well, you know, once you have a team in place, but mm-hmm. making it. ring. So what's, um, what's next, man? Uh, next for me is the, I feel like there's so much more. Oh, here's another thing too, Carl. You also helped me. I used to fall into the rhetoric and to surround myself with the people like, oh, business is hard. People just aren't buying homes, rates mm-hmm. are this, right? You protect your mind like uh, like like a 10 year old girl, right? In the way of uh, in, influentialness. So I do the same thing. I surround myself only with people that are encouraging. And here's the thing. there's a, I bet there's a lot of people out here listening that don't have that circle naturally. Mortgage Marketing Animal gives it. Every Monday, I've got call stars. Call, call stars is where we all get together on a Zoom and we make our calls. It's so great if you're isolated to look and see, gosh, 70 other people from around the c- country that are making this the same calls, Right. Tuesday um, is is another Zoom where we get to ask you questions personally, which is amazing on this. Thursday, we, we have Steve Kyles to help with the scripting and the rebuttals and everything that way. So what's next for me, Steve, is I just want to see where I can go w- with this without spending, without working more than 40 hours. That's yeah. important to me, right? So for me, that next um, milestone is 20. I want to get to the 20 units a month on that side. All right. So let's, so, so, um, when's your, when's your, Hey, I got I, I, two questions and we'll wrap this up. What do you, what, if anything, do you do different to go from 11 to 20 is, is uh part one. So what, uh, what do you do different or is it just continuing to do what you're doing and, and the results building upon each other? Or do you think, is there something else you need to be doing to get from 
11 to 20? Like what, what, what's different? Love it. So um, I asked myself that question, Carl, and with two loans. Where, and I know it's pre pre premature, right? So I put people in place already. If it's too um, fork in the road, meaning that if I would have waited till I was at five or six and started it, what I was doing at five or six is different than what I'm doing at 11. But I asked the question at loan two. So from loan two, I was like, okay, what can I do? And that's having a pre-approval specialist. Somebody that is going to, after I speak with them, I have the discovery call, they put the documents together, they have the conversation with them that kicks me back in. So for me, what the difference was, there's no difference, but I'm unique, right? But if I was, it's systems in place with everyone distinct roles and knowing what their, um, knowing what their role is and never deviating from, from that. It's very easy as a loan officer to want to jump back into the, to the closing side of things on fire, but you have taught us that no, that's their role, empower them, ask what their solutions are and, uh, and, and allow them to go take care of it. So really, it's just simple. Uh, the only thing different is what you're doing more, like just yeah. more prospecting. More, yeah. I, more, more. And, and this, Carl, right here, I don't know if you can see this. This is a, and, and for the people that are listening, this is a chested timer. So green time, red time, really important, right? So it's funny that you think you're in green time, which is sales, until you start to measure it. Uh, so the first couple of days was very alarming. I thought, <laughs> I thought I was getting a lot more green time than I was. So um, this has been very helpful for me. As well. yeah, thanks to our good friend, Mark Pfeiffer, uh, yes. for, uh, which by the way, Mark just sent me a, uh, a picture. I love, I love what I do, man. Mark just sent me a picture of him and his family. Uh, they're in Bryce uh, National Park in Utah uh on spring break and he's just having a whale of a time and having a very 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 good month too so all right so next question so what are you going to do different yep. it's really just more prospecting and and having yes. uh, uh one maybe two uh, uh, uh people on your team probably one you know one, yep. one extra people person on your team all right so and we're time stamping this man there's 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 tens of thousands of loan officers gonna be listening to this around the country so here's here's the big question okay. when Okay, so here's where I don't get attached to, to that. I feel like the more productive that I am, the loans will come. I, I, I think, Carl, for me, it's the same thing where I can make my calls on Mondays to realtors on our Thor Hammer, and I might get 25 voicemails. And then, but I keep making those calls for two hours and I might get that one conversation that was so powerful that I set an appointment with that made it all worth it. So I know the more time I spend sales, right? And you have the people that are listening to this, please to, to take my word for this. You need to at least have an introductory call with Carl's team because they'll let you know what the highest and best use of your time is. What is sales? What truly is it? What does it mean? So the more that I can spend doing that, I know those numbers will come. But if you had to put, put me to it, I think that I can get to 20 units by the end of June. I would... Um... It, I would, uh, I'd bet with you on that one. That that's actually that's actually the, I, I, yeah. It, and it wouldn't surprise me if you hit it before. Uh, just FYI, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, I, if I had to do the over under, I, I would say, I would say, um, yeah, before I, I I'd, I'd bet on before July. So I I I I, I agree with that. I take you know, to, Carl. Well, one thing I want to tell you too, because of what you've done and how, what you've taught me. I've got 11 in for April. Yes, that's great. But I also have two in for for March. I have two in for April and one in for May, just for that already starting to build, right? I used to never have that pipeline starting to build. So we're talking yeah. about 11 in March. That's great. But I already have future ones too that are coming as well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll um, you know, and sometimes we can have a, we can have a, a, a challenging month in, in the middle of our success, right? right. But, but, uh, but I can see you're, you're, you're not one to get discouraged. So dude, I, I, I'm just, you're awful, you're awful gracious on, on your kind comments here directed to me, but I just want to clarify brother, a hundred percent of the credit goes to you. I mean, you, you've just really, um, you know, you've just done the deal and, and you're the one that makes that happen. It's your discipline. It's your desire. Uh, it's, it's your, you're the one that's stepping up to the plate and do it, do what dads do, or for our ladies, do what moms do. Right. Uh, or do what single people like, whatever. How, I don't mean to pick on one group, but you're the one that's making this happen. So, uh, Girl, so no uh, different. 
no different than anybody else that's listening on here. All I did was make a decision that no matter what, for 90 days, I was going to give it 100% commitment, what that looked like, right, of, de of defining what the commitment was and seeing it through. And I'm on a podcast here, here with you 90 days later. And it is, it's, as you said, the system works 100% of the time. It's not like, hey, you work this hard and maybe you'll see some results. It works. It works to anybody that's listening out there. The reason I wanted to be on this, Carl, was if somebody that's listening could understand that I was in their same boat that they are, inconsistent as it can be, coming off COVID numbers and can rebuild it literally from scratch, literally from scratch. Yeah. They can too. Good for you, man. Hey, is there something I should have asked you today that I didn't? Do we cover it okay? Did I miss anything? I, no. well, dude, I could sit here and talk to you for the next two hours. <laughs> but uh, fantastic. No, I'm very grateful. I'm humbled. Thank you, Carl, for all the effort that you put into and for people to have an outlet to understand. I would just say to people that are out there, um, if you don't have an environment around you, you have one with the mortgage marketing animals. That, that's there is going to be positive is going to be uplifting to show you what is possible i think sometimes too we have to see like you have to see others do it to, to know like i can too and i think that's that's great but as far as questions you're you you, you ask them carl and i'm extremely grateful all right cool brother I, th I think i think we pulled it off here so uh so uh yeah be on the watch out for adam so we'll uh we'll have to check back in uh here in uh, july and just see how we're doing Good you know, and see where we're at. And, uh, if we made it, we're going to celebrate. And if we didn't, we'll figure out what we'll, we'll figure out together. What do we need to tweak? Right? Yeah, that's, exactly. that, that's how this works. Oh, nice. Look, even, even the Super Bowl team doesn't win every game. They just right. win most games. Right. Yep. That's, that's, that's just, that's just how this works. So, uh, but I'm betting with you too, Adam. I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm grateful that if we're given the analogy of football, I'm grateful that I'm, uh, I'm sitting there, sitting there on the line and you're there with me. And not on the other side facing me. I don't think I'd. Uh, I don't think I'd like that at all. So, uh, so Adam, thanks. appreciate you being on the uh, on the episode, and uh, and 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 thanks thanks for donating your time here. I really appreciate Absolutely. it, buddy. Absolutely, Carl. Thank you. All right, and for our listeners today, um, boy, when you're ready to explore some epic results, when you want to get mapped out of exactly what you do and what steps you take, if you can imagine going from two to 11 or from 11 to 35, uh, I would love to have that conversation with you. If you just go to freedomclubdemo.com, freedomclubdemo.com, uh, it'll take you to a calendar and we'll just book out uh, about an hour of time and we'll map out exactly the steps that uh, that Adam took and we'll uh, we'll map out, we'll, we'll help you structure each individual day and then we'll help you structure each individual week. And uh, once you have a very disciplined plan of exactly what to say, who to say it to, when to say it, and to get more loans, and what does a team look like that's closing uh, 11 loans, 20 loans, 30 loans a month, uh, just go to freedomclubdemo.com, freedomclubdemo.com. And, you know, and just one other thing, uh, a good friend of mine, Todd Ballinger, sent out uh, an email the other day of something that I just, it's been on my mind and it's how to avoid procrastination. How you avoid procrastination. I've been meaning to do this. I've been thinking about doing this. I've been thinking about doing this. How you get rid of it is do it now, right? Do it now, do it today, do it now, get rid of procrastination, do it now, do it now. So freedomclubdemo.com, freedomclubdemo.com. Thanks so much, Adam. Thank you again. And we'll talk to you guys when you call in. Bye-bye.